Do your best to be authentically who you are. You could be a, a, a speaker, a philosopher, you could be anything. You could be a father, you could be a son, you could be a mother, a wife, whatever you are. Don't allow anyone to box you in. Just be authentically you and whatever your intuition tells you to do. As long as it's morally right, do that shit. Oh, hold on. Y'all ain't heard of Prince Drive? And what's the word, y'all? It's Prince Drive. You know how I'm coming. This is and that's that. I just got to say I'm the realest. And if you say you the realest, then that's cap. <laughs> Go. And it's all. No, I'm just <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Esheray. And today, I have a very special guest. I want to introduce y'all to Prince Drive. God, uh, it's me. I want to introduce y'all to Prince Drive because this is someone who I think is very special. Um, he got a very dope personality, very dope spirit. And I want the child to get to know this side of him. Prince Drive. Mm -hmm. How you doing today? You know, how was today? It was all right, man. I, you know? I just been up in here record, you know. Feel me? Nothing too much for real. I'm grateful to be alive, you know how I'm coming. Period. So tell me who is drive. And don't tell me like what you do. Mm -hmm. Tell me who are you. Alright, so real in real life, I mean of course I go by Prince Drive. My real name is Prince. Uh, drive stands for Divine Resilient. Individual voice and experience. You know, say that again. Divine, resilient, individual voice and experience. I feel like all of us are that, uh, no matter what we do. You see what I'm saying? We all divine because we kept, we, we made it here. You see what I'm saying? We made it to the egg. <laughs> we, we resilient because there's so much shit that it happened in our lives. You feel me? That we was able to get past. That's why we right here having this show. You see what I'm saying? And then individual meaning that it's always no one like you on this earth. And then you voicing that experience through whatever you do. Like we doing right now, you know, this show, this podcast. That's voicing the experience. Music is voicing the experience. Whether you paint, draw, whatever it is, you're voicing your own experience through those mediums. So that's what drive stands for. Um who I am though. Um, I'm a father, I'm a MC, I'm an artist, um, musician, if you will, very intermediate with that because I'm, I just now started to play instruments. Um, what else? I'm a chef, I know how to cook. What else? I'm a mentor to people. Um, Tap dance coach. No, let me stop. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I got that from Tree. Shout out Tree. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I am. I'm a son. I'm not a husband yet, but I, I, I want to be one day. Um, yeah. Okay. So what drives drive? What drives drive? Um. As far as priority goes, I'm gonna say my child drives drive because though my parents did, you know, a pretty good job with me, you know, I speak, I speak well, I am, you know, a great person, um, I would say, you know, maybe I'm being biased, but <laughs> though I speak well and I'm a great person, I would want my child to be 10 times what I am. So that's what drives me every single day. That's dope. What's something you want to instill in your daughter mm -hmm. that your parents didn't instill in you? Um, I wouldn't say uh, it was a lack of anything, but I would say um, I just want to enforce it a little bit better. I want to, I wanted to, like, for instance, I mean, I feel like my parents gave me all of the tools, so it's on, it's only on me to give her more tools. Uh, and the tool that I would want to get her the most would be financial uh, stability. Because when I was growing up, we, I was, you know, I mean, we didn't have it like that. I mean, they gave me whatever I wanted for real for a while. But then when it was hard, it was hard and things of that nature. So 
Um, I just want to make sure that anything that she wants to do, I'm able to fund that. That's what I'm on right now, is being able to fund that. And then the things that I'm getting into, teaching her. So like, most most things financial literacy wise, you know, I'm learning how to be financially literate with my money. And that's what I wanna, if, if I could answer that question in a nutshell, that's what I want to give her, is like financial literacy because, you know, growing up in black households, African-American it's households, it's, it's not never, it, money is not even talked about most times. It's not. And when it is, it's, it's, it's a scarcity mindset around it. So now that I've um, did the work to try to break my scarcity mindset, I still have it sometimes, but more than anything, I have an abundance mindset. It's not, nothing is scarce. Okay. Nothing is scarce. You can go out and get whatever you want. So um, I just wanted to steal those things along with financial literacy, learning how to trade, things of that nature, um, making your money work for you. Because if you always work for your money, then you will be out of time. And that's what I be experiencing right now. You know, like I, I have so many different things that I want to do. Um, but also you got to get money. Right. You see what I'm saying? You got to get money no to do all them things. It. But if you already have a foundation full of money, then you can just explore whatever you want exactly. to explore. You don't have to work for it, you know. Yeah. You still gotta work, but but yeah, but that's the thing. You can work harder uh, on the things that you're supposed to be here exactly. to do. Exactly. So like, say for instance, like a Steph Curry, his father was in the NBA, so he never had to worry about you know how I'm gonna pay a phone bill, how I'm gonna do this, how I'm gonna do that, how I'm gonna do that. He just had to be in the gym every single day of his life, and that's what made him one of the greatest players to ever live right, right now. Because he 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 focused he honed in on one thing for all of his life. He don't know nothing else. Right. So if you if, if you have that ability to hone in on something without the outside world, then I feel like you can be the best at what you do. For sure. That's so crazy how we get tied up in the outside world. Though, That's like, a fact. Like I said, it's just so much going on right now. Um, land. Playing with my money, playing with my family. Not so much playing with me because I I, I kind of um I'm not when I was younger I I was more hot headed, you know more hot than anything. Um, but now I understand that people are just mirrors of who you of, of you know. So like for instance. Uh, if, if I had an example, like say you go to the liquor store and there's just somebody out there cussing out anybody who go into the liquor store. Mm -hmm. If you choose to react to that person, that's really on you because obviously they have something deeper going on. And I use that with every single thing. Sometimes I'm still, you know, I, I still be on some human shit, but most right. most times on God body, you feel me? I'm going to forgive somebody. I'm going to you know, like if you if you get to talking to me crazy, it's gonna take a minute for me to not to be like Yeah, because because I understand and I got empathy for what you're going through. I don't even know what you're going through, but I see myself in you though. Right. And I remember when I would probably just be outside of the liquor store wanting to cuss everybody up. Right. Not literally, but like for real. Like I remember being in a state where I was so upset at the world or upset at things that you know, like, I, I I probably wasn't a good person to everyone. Right. So, um, yeah, I just try to take that approach to everything. Uh, but, yeah, playing with my money, playing with my family, and uh, uh, playing with my art, too. Like, I, don't, I don't like when people, you know, like, I mean, I, I take constructive criticism, but, you know, I don't like when people just write off things without even trying them more. I don't like, another thing I don't like is um, closed-mindedness. Hmm. Like, I have to agree with that one as well. I hate closed-mindedness. Like, if you not willing to try something and you just stuck in your ways, mm -hmm. then that's probably where you're going to die at. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to be like grim or nothing. Right, no, no, it's, it's true because like, if you not doing something new or, you know, learning something every day or... Mm -hmm. You know, you you pretty much waste your time. Yeah. And life is all about experiencing and learning and That's you know. 
Uh, what are you doing? For real? You feel me? You're not <laughs> what progressing. You if you, if you're you not doing? learning or experiencing nothing, then you're not progressing. Exactly. So, could you be, could you like somebody who didn't like your art? Like, genuinely just hated it? Even though I, you know, you know, you, you love your music, but if they hated your music. I think, uh, hmm. Because music is not, I would say music is not my only form of art. I do so many different things. So maybe someone would like the way that I cook, but not like the way my music sounds. Because, right. you know, like, well, somebody might like or may have purchased a book from me, a poetry book. They like poetry more than they like my music. So, but if somebody just make the choice to just literally not like nothing that I do, then I probably couldn't be cool with them. So even if it was something that you held dear to your heart, like let's just say you you wrote a song and you didn't cry like you didn't let everything out you think this your best song yeah. and somebody come around and I hate it I don't like it I, I, I can't <laughs> fuck with it I would, um you know what when those type of things happen because I've had people like you know shun me or put me down on, on music mm -hmm. musically um I mean I am sensitive about my art like Erica Badu said however. Um, it's, that's just their opinion right. Especially when I know multiple people Really love what I do And they might love what I do more than what I, I love what I do honestly Some some people really do love my music More than I do sometimes Right. Like I would I, I've sent people songs and they still talk to Talk about those songs and I'll be like And when I listen to those songs that they Still talk about till today That right. they say it's like classic or whatever Or they remember me performing it And they like Man, bro, I can't remember. I remember when you performed, blah, 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 blah. It just be like, when I listen to that song, knowing where I am and how much I progress now, I just cringe at the song. Like, man. But right. this other person over here is loving it. Uh, like, you right. feel what I'm saying? So, I don't really take opinions as facts. Like, that don't really move me. Like, I don't take opinions. It's just, you know? And also, you can always transmute energy. So when people give you negative energy about anything, that is just allow you to just go harder on whatever it is that you want to do. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like you transmute that into positive energy. Okay, all right. You don't like that? I right, bet you are gonna be mad to sell when you see me on. How long did it take you to get like that? Cause like we sit here and we say that it's you know like pushing it off or whatever the case may be. And it's it's not easy to do that, you know? It's not. So how, like, how long did it take you to get to that point? And when did you decide, like, you know what? This is, I got to make a change. This is how I got to be now. I got two answers to that question. Um, so in 2020, when I felt like I was just, um, like, getting to a point of me really, really loving my own art, my own music, uh, I had got put on house arrest for a while. And just seeing how people interacted with me, my friends didn't come see me or come get up with me or or they if they even if they couldn't or whatever it was. Um, that was just a hard time for me and it was you know, like being by yourself will teach you a lot of things. You feel me? So being by myself taught me that I'm really supposed to be by myself. It's actually hard for me to go outside. Like, I'm really an introvert. Like, I would rather be in my room creating than anything in the world. Literally, I don't care about nothing but that. So, um, what was the question again? What, what did you say? Yeah, yeah. What did you say? Hold on. I, I remember. Um, you said, when did I get to that point? When did you get to that point? Okay, so... Um, one thing is house arrest, you know, that just allowed me to be by myself for a while and it allowed me to discover myself. And then the second thing would be just really, I remember when I first started making music and things like that, like in 2015 or 2016 for real. And the, the people that I liked, like uh, Kendrick or J. Cole or Shmino, uh, um, you know, or old school artists, or you know Erica Badu everybody that I really liked that it was like my taste was way higher than the things that I was making mm -hmm. so now that's not the truth anymore like my taste and the things that I'm making 
are so close to each other that I don't I could care less what the outside world thinks. Right, I feel that. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I, I really love I do it for me and then whoever connect with it that's just they were supposed to connect with it. Exactly. Same thing with how you put out energy in the world. You see what I'm saying? Like like if somebody if say for instance you get a new job and then now you have co-workers and they trying to be up under you because you got good energy. It's the same thing with music. Like people understand energy. Energy energy don't lie. That's why that's why language don't do no justice. You see what I'm saying? Body language do justice because you can come in a room or come in. A, you ever came into a party and then it's just like, ooh, it's bad vibes. Up oh yeah, for sure. You see what I mean, quick to move around. It's the same. It's the same concept. I'm like, very empathetic. Mm-hmm. I pick up on energies and stuff like that very, very fast and easy. So exactly. So I think that's the reason why is because I'm not doing it for a purpose, like trying to get seen anymore. Like, I would love to, don't get me wrong, everybody would love to be uh, celebrated because of their art, but I don't, that's not my reason. I feel like I, I have to do it. I feel like I have an obligation now, because okay. because I feel like, in some ways, my music is healing, you feel me, to people. They listen to, and I've heard it, and I had people tell me, like, yeah, bro, like, this really helped me through some hard times, like, so... If I could do that, or if I could help people find themselves while I'm finding myself, because that's all I'm doing through my music is trying right. to find myself. Exactly. You feel me? Like I'm only, I'm literally only, uh, the things that I, I never know what I'm going to say. I never know anything that's going to go on. Like, I'm just trying to find myself and reach to the deepest depths of my, of my soul. And whoever resonate with that, then they resonate. Whoever don't, then they don't. You feel me? Amen, I'm cool I think with that. that's super dope. I appreciate it. It's crazy how um, music is so, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's so widespread. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, because I can't think of the word right mm-hmm. now. You don't have to speak English to feel, like in, in an English song, you don't have to speak English to feel the emotions or the, you know, the vibe that's going on in a song right. or the beat. Like, yeah. It's it's universal. Yeah, that's the word that I'm for. Music yeah. is universal. So when you make your music like that to you know speak to people specifically and you know healing, it's powerful. Yeah. And you know I wish more artists thought like that when yeah. it comes to their music. So I think that's super dope. That's one other thing though that I that I understand is some artists. So it's, you have your artists that only want to get money, but that was never what I was in, in it for. You feel me? I was only in it to express myself. It's almost like a journal entry. So, and I, I heard this from Rick Rubin. You know who Rick Rubin is? He, uh, uh he, so, uh, he the, he half of Def Jam. So it's, it's Russell Simmons and then it's Rick Rubin uh, that came together to create Def Jam Records. And he was just basically saying like, you should treat your art like a, like a journal entry. You feel me? Like, you wouldn't... If somebody see your journal entry, they're not going to say, oh, this is a bad journal entry. This is not good enough. Or this is not... You know, like, so... So, it really don't matter what anyone says about anything because this is my journal entry, man. You feel me? Like, this... How you going to say anything about... This is how I was feeling at this time. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter if it's good to you because you didn't go through that experience. But the people who went through that experience, like, damn, how the fuck did he say it like that how did he you know like so it's just not for everybody yeah and you, it's like in a way you're speaking also for people who don't got the voice to say it exactly so, yeah, that's, so that's my obligation it's good that you know your obligation <laughs> <laughs> it's good um so what's your thoughts on nature versus nurture um do you feel like it's possible for children to be born serial killers or to be born gay or to be born you know a certain type of way or do you feel like the environment is what make people the way that they are um well i did i i'm glad you asked that question because i did some research on that and it's, it's really mostly always your environment like your genes can be rewritten well your dna can be rewritten by your environment hmm so like 
just like you know, like lions. Like if lion, if if you take a lion um, and put him inside of the zoo, and that 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 lion has children, he gonna die. Yeah, and that children, that child may never know what it's like to be in the wild. Right. You see what I'm saying? So he's only gonna have a zoo, you know, a, a mindset of the zoo. the zoo. So he might get ate up if you put him in a wild. You see what I'm saying? Or he might adapt. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I think it's mostly, it, a little bit of it is always, you know, your DNA, your genes, your parents, things of that nature. But your environment is heavy uh, because I know people that were real well off and they just turn into, you know, whatever they turn into. So, I got a friend who, um, I'm not going to name, mm -hmm. and she got a little brother. And as long as I've been around, I'm talking like, he like 16 now. He, he He's gay. Mm -hmm. And I've been around them their whole life. Mm -hmm. And I noticed just like, as a baby, as a, a young child, he would go towards like purses and play mm -hmm. with them. as a as a child, not even knowing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And getting older and seeing little things and yeah. snapping and you know what I'm saying? And yeah. in that household, there, you know, it was a man in the household. And, you know, it, I don't see exactly what he could have got those traits from. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I necessarily yeah. believe in being born that way. But yeah. it's crazy how a little bitty baby, you know, could pick up on those yeah. traits like that. And I feel like just, you know... For example, me, I know what I knew what I liked, and I liked what I liked, and mm -hmm. can't nobody or nothing influence me to like what mm -hmm. I like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not gonna watch TV and see some girls kissing and be like, "Oh, I want to kiss a girl." Yeah, I think I think what you're saying is more on a conscious level, though. But like subconscious shit is real too. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, so with, if it's being planted in front of your face all the time. You might be more susceptible to that based upon your subconscious. It ain't it ain't just gonna be your conscious saying like, oh, they kissing girls, so I want to kiss." Like that's not right. But on the subconscious level, when you continue to see things, just like for instance, uh, growing up, you know, growing up in the hoods, you gonna watch a lot of shit like Boys in the Hood right. or Paid in Full or these things, these hood movies that we all love so much. Mm -hmm. That's what make us more susceptible to think that certain things are always okay. Right. When they're not. Because it's planted into your subconscious. You feel me? Like it's a under the you know, it's a it's a under the uh counter thing. So but um I have seen what you seen as well. Like I've had seen, seen somebody very young doing things, you know, that were the opposite. Right. Before. Um and I think I, I really don't know why that is. I think it's it's, crazy. It's, it's it's observational, and then it's partially them, and then it's also like some things, some like for instance, um, you know, I'm gonna go to some of the things that you eat. Some of the things that you eat create more testosterone, or it creates more, um, what's the word? Uh, the woman. I can't think of it right now. Um, estrogen. Estrogen. Yeah, certain things like soy create more estrogen in your body. You feel me? So it could be very you like it's so it's so detailed and deep that you would never know. It's so deep, body. but it's just like damn, you know, it's definitely something that I noticed and I'm like, hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So that go as like as hand in hand with my next question, like, what do you feel like the difference between living and existing? So living is, um, in my opinion, simply just treating every day like your last, like putting everything on the table before you, you know, like acting like as if, acting as if, you know, you could die in your sleep. You see what I'm saying? Like you did everything today that you would want, want to, do. to do. You know, like sometimes I know I should be out probably doing something like some lift or some dumb ass shit. Like, making sure I stand on my business. Um, but I'll be in the studio. Or I'll be in my room, you know, making or making sure that my mental health correct. Like, you know, meditating or reading or something, bro. I'm 26. I don't want to get to a point where I'm about to be 26. I don't want to get to a point where it's like, you know, I want to be the old man that's sharp. Right. You see what I'm saying? I want to be sharp. I want to be on top of my game. 
I want to be fit. You see what I'm saying? So these things matter more to me than money right now. You see what I'm saying? These things uh, matter more to me than money. And I feel like when we capitalism got us in a, in a loop, that's like it just existing because you always going to need to do something. You feel what I'm saying? It's on you to like slow that down. And it don't matter. Usually, usually, and that's the crazy part, like we got so much of an influence on us from the outside sources that we'd be scared to get our phone to cut off or we'd be scared to get our car took in or our house took in or whatever. But all of that thing, all of them things are stressing us anyway. Man, you know I saying? actually just seen a post that you shared and it was uh, about a challenge about locking your phone up for 30 days. I felt out for it. And um, I feel like we are, like, when it comes to social media and the way that everything is now, like, we are definitely connected to our phones more than... Now they got a feature where you can see how many hours you've been on your phone. And it was, like, 7 o'clock when I checked my phone, and it said I was on my phone for 7 hours. 7 hours is crazy in one day. And it's like, you know, it's not even on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's like you get into scrolling, and then you yeah. get into this never-ending stop yeah. of just scrolling. And it's like, damn, seven hours. Imagine what I could have did exactly. in those seven hours. And then think about the shit that you used to do when you was a kid in seven hours. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I miss the child like me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I'm getting back to that. That's the reason why my art is coming so heavy. Because it's like, it's like I'm creating from a child space, not an adult space no more. Like, being an adult is very, like, dark. Right, man. It's like dark. If you don't, if you wasn't came, if you didn't come into no money from being born, being an adult is dark because you always got to think about your next move. Exactly. But sometimes you got to slow down and really take care of you. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I've been focusing on too. Like I really don't care about what happened with nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because if all of these things gonna stress me out, I, I probably ain't gonna be here to reap the you know the benefits, reap the the benefits of this shit anyway. You feel me? Old, feeling old. And yeah, how, how, nah. You say you finna be 26. How old do you feel? Shit, I, when I, I don't know. Since I've been young, I felt like an old man because I always had a lot of old, wise people around me. Like, I grew up with my grandma. I actually live in the crib with her. She 85. My auntie 82, 83, just turned 83. So it's like blessings. And then, you know, like... I don't know. I just had always people around me to like point to me with what, even if they couldn't point to me financially like that, it was always knowledge or, knowledge or wisdom or things that make me understand things. So I just, I feel like I'm way older than I am mentally. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. That's the reason why I'm able to have friends that's way older than me. Right. You feel me? And I've always been like that. So, um, have you ever been bullied? Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I would say because, so, I don't know, my, shit, I come from a family full of badass kids. You see what I'm saying? Most black people do. We all badass, baby, what they say, baby kids. Baby kids. But it's only because we don't got nothing to put that into. Right. Like, imagine if you, that's one thing we were just talking about. I that agree with that. Circle it back around to if you had enough money to get this young man a guitar or a piano or something that he could just touch or a woman or a little girl she could just touch. Or That's why girls be braiding hell like that and be so fucking raw at it because they've been braiding their baby, they baby doll hell forever. You see what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I was bullied because when I was like five, my cousin shot me in the eye with a BB gun, and I lost uh, sight of my eye, my left eye forever. See what I'm saying? I ain't saw, I don't know how I feel to see with two eyes since I've been five years old. Right. So shit, and then that kind of, uh, and then I, I went to like kindergarten, and I had to wear eye patch at one time, and they used to be tweaking with me. And then my eye always been slightly lazy every now and then because of that. You see what I'm saying? So. He used to just be tweaking with me until I could fight. You see what I'm saying? So. <laughs> At first, I used to just be, you know, like, I just tell my mama or something like that, but that shit right. fades out after a while. After a while, like, yeah. you got me fucked up, it's not yeah, that. Me up, yeah. I'm not the one. 
Okay. So what is something that you would say to that bully now that you wouldn't have said to them then? Oh, you know what? Let me rephrase that. How is your approach to that bully different now than it was back then because you were a different person? Um, what would you say to them? Uh, 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 first of all, if somebody bullied my daughter, I might beat their daddy ass. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, uh, no, nah, I'm, let me. I'm not that changed. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you feel me? But, uh, but what I would say to that bully is, shit, fuck you. <laughs> on the game, no cap. I'm still, I'm still that. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I, I'm talking all this shit, but that's because, and I'm, I do all this shit, and I meditate, and I journal is because I got real like issues for real. Like I think everybody do if you push them to their limits. For you sure. see what I'm saying? So it's like that's why I don't. That's why I, I make sure I'm at a, like ground zero, so I can't be pushed to my limits. But I would tell that bully fuck you though. I ain't gonna lie, I tell all they ass fuck. But they was going through their own shit. They felt like they had to bully me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that whatever, I probably shouldn't even tell them fuck you because they had some shit going on. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so. you see the way that you even thinking, or even just to rephrase and spring that up. Um, you know, you definitely got a different way of thinking. Mm-hmm. So definitely, everybody going through their shit, and I, I, I had to learn too, like. You know, I used to be real reactive to things, and I had to learn, like, you know, people just gonna be the way that they are. Everybody mm-hmm. different, everybody raised different, everybody think differently. It's a flip. So, you can't even get mad at motherfuckers for being the way that they is, you know, as long as it ain't you. Hell no. Nah. You can't Don't control you? how they feel and what they do and how they, they, um, some people impulse is different, you know. That's a fact. So. A fact. And the only thing you could really, that go back to our pet peeves that we was talking about, only thing that you could really judge somebody for is being um, close-minded. Mm-hmm. Because those things, like, want, like bullying don't, it can't, if you open-minded and you understand somebody else's perspective, you will never bully nobody. That's why I was never a bully. You see right. what I'm saying? Because I always knew, and that's what I mean about always thinking a little bit older than how I am. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I never thought like a bully because that was like immature to me. Right. You see what I'm saying? Well, I know I know bro over there don't got these shoes. You see what I'm saying? I know he got holes in his shoes for a reason, so I'm not going to talk about I've never been the type of person to talk about a motherfucker because of what they didn't have or whatever. You know, sometimes yeah. little stuff, yeah. of, you know, a little, little joke or here. But I've never been the type of person to, you know, point a person flaws out and make fun of them. Like, yeah. I, I just really feel like you know, I would say in you know, some ways I I, right. would, I I would say I would say I was never a bully with it. Right. But I would fry a motherfucker like when I got older. Like, I, I, I fry, yeah, like on some frying shit. Like I fry you. You know, we. Fry. But it's still all love though. At the end of the day, it ain't exactly. like I'm trying to tell you down. Right. Like, I never tried to tell nobody down behind it. If I was frying somebody, it's likely because they was talking right. crazy. Like you know. What been on your mind lately? What's something that's just been beating you down not even necessarily beating you down just something that just been on your mind heavy like you know what i gotta do this or this need to be done or i you know something mm-hmm. that just been even if it's a movie that just keep playing in your head what been on your mind like so the things that been on my mind lately um it's always gonna be music of course but also like um i just i found that i'm gifted just in writing period so just putting out another book on my birthday. Okay. And then uh, uh, I got a few other things like creating a restaurant, a, a plant-based restaurant, because niggas like me that don't eat meat, we don't got nowhere to go at the 12 o'clock. Right. If you drunk, you fuck. You finna get some, some fries. That's a million dollar plan right there. You hear me though? So, yeah, if I could just stay up to one or two, you see what I'm saying? Something like that. And I, uh, that's one of the things that I'm thinking about. I got the name for it already. Man, uh, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yeah, so those are the things that be burning in my brain because I know, once again, I, the thing that drives me is my, my child, and I know I'm going to have children. You see what I'm saying? So I need to be able to lead them something. Uh, not only just my wealth of you know, uh, understanding and wisdom, but I need to be able to concretely lead them an asset or something because, you know, like that, 
that'll help everybody out. Exactly. After I leave this earth, if which is which, which you gonna do? You see what I'm saying? Like you can't live here forever. So with that, no, with, with knowing what you know, and the and the thoughts bursting in your head, and you know mm-hmm. what's stopping you? Um, nothing stopping me. I think it's just more plan. You feel me? Like, cause you can't just jump into anything just willy nilly. I feel like you gotta really like, okay, how much does this cost? How much will inventory cost? Because because if you don't plan, you will just be, you know, you will be closing it down before you. You definitely gotta plan to do stuff. But what's, have you sat down and made the plan to start making the plans? Mm -hmm. Like budget and, you know, uh, I wouldn't say budget so much, but I would, I like, uh, the things that I, especially, like, restaurant-wise, the things that I'm gonna I'm make, uh, how I want the aesthetic to look, you know, the things that I want, like, I want people to be, I want to hold open mics and shit like that, I want okay. people to be able to come show their art, you feel me, I want plants everywhere, things of that nature, so, really, it's, it's a skeleton in my brain, and on, on paper right now. But once I get it all down packed, I think what what kind of stops if if we want to use the word stop or pauses it is is really like knowing that you got once again adult responsibilities right now. You feel me? You gotta worry about how you gonna pay this or pay that or pay this or pay that. It's hard to structure a plan when you kind of living in survival mode at times. Yeah, I understand. So it, it's way different when you the only thing you have the dominant thought in your mind is the plan. Right. The plan, like in the middle of my mind, it's like still there, but it's like so many different things I got to take care of. So. Right. And it's crazy because I feel like I'm the complete opposite. And don't get me wrong, a couple of things that I've done have I feel like did very well, but a lot of things I did not plan for. So like I'm the type of person that would put it like all on the line very quick like not yeah very quickly yeah. like um or you would say like how would i pay for this and i'd be like okay well i need to make these plans so i could pay for it with the restaurant mm-hmm. you know what i'm That's saying and you know it was cool to think like that it's also like you definitely gotta prepare a lot more because mm-hmm. when you jump into things like you get distracted and you get yeah. you know it's it's a lot, but you know, I I think that's a de- definitely a good idea, and I feel like you're gonna make, make a lot of money because after twelve o'clock, mm-hmm. ain't nothing going on. Especially if you do it on like on some your own terms type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, be legal with it too. Yeah, but sure. what motherfuckers pulling up with the vegan place at what? one o'clock? Can't drive up. Yeah, we can't drive up. We I go. might even get some vegan spaghetti. I ain't gonna lie. It's two a.m. I got all type of shit though. <laughs> Vegan spaghetti gonna be like sad meal. I got all type of shit though. You feel? Okay, so let's just say you had unlimited wishes, right? Mm-hmm. Would you give your unlimited unlimited wishes up to, for world peace? Yes. For Easily. Sure. For sure. Easily. World peace will be one of the wishes. So yeah. Cool. That's yeah. good to for know. For sure. For sure. Because it's like. There's nothing you could not do with world peace. World peace. You see what I'm saying? It's like, just but I, I happiness do. Happiness and. I do. I don't know if I believe in utopia though. Like, I don't know if I believe in like. It's always gonna be some level of balance. You see what I'm saying? Like. It gotta be. Yin and yang is true. Dark and light is true. And I feel like a lot of people don't. So they only think it's it's dimensions to everything. They only think that dark is terrible or dark or right. death is terrible. Like I don't think that way. I don't think that death is terrible. I don't think that I feel like tragic death is horrible. It's horrible. You feel what I'm saying? But I feel like death is not a bad thing because that's the only thing we promise. I feel like darkness is not a bad thing because that's where things grow. You see exactly. what I'm saying? So so I don't, I don't view things like, like it's either in or be all. Like a lot of people can't even imagine, you know, dying them. Like I, I can't imagine either. But I'm just saying, like I know it's gonna happen. So let's go ahead and plan for the future. You see what I'm saying? That's what I type type shit. I'll be on. I ain't gonna lie. You feel me? Do you want um, when you do? Even though I don't like to talk mm-hmm. about death, but do you want 
You want to be buried in Chicago? I don't know. It depends on if I live in Chicago. Do you plan on living in Chicago? Not really. I don't want to live. Not really. I, uh, I, it's, it's too many. It's too, I don't want to live there either. I, you, I'm ready thing, to go. So the great things about Chicago is it made me very sharp. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Like I could go anywhere and live because nowhere is as I don't think nowhere is like survival mode. Yeah, keep you on your toes as much as Chicago because not just that trauma happens and shit like that, and you didn't lost people and things of that nature. That happens too, but Chicago just a, a, a fast city. Fast city, and you we hear me? definitely. I feel like we put on to so much more, so much quicker. Yeah. And most of the people who get famous in Chicago, or you know, known or world, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. they stay on. They stay relevant. That's like, true. That's true. It's it's very hard to get on in Chicago because it's like a crab in a barrel city. It is. It is. So if you make it out of Chicago, yeah. You could go you anywhere. A, you, 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 you build different. motherfucker. You build different. You build different. You build different. But I, I think, I think ultimately, uh, my people are from Ghana. I think ultimately I'll be in Ghana, though. Like, I, I ultimately, like, when I see my kids grow older and then they, like, cool and I'm making sure that they good, I really want a lot of land and I want to live off the land. So I want, I want... Grasslands and plants. And yeah, I want... I, so my 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 end goal for life is having a family compound where all my friends and where the people that I trust that are my friends and my family and my cousins and every I own so many acres that everybody can have a house. Everybody can bring something to the table. You feel me? If you got avocados over there and I got strawberries over right. there, man, and. And they make uh, and they filter alkaline water over there. Then we can that's all just, and, you know. And I, that's how it's supposed to be. It is. That's how it's supposed to be. It is. But be. once you, I got a lyric that say, um, "Imagine being chosen, but you get amnesia and forgot this." When they change your last name to Johnson, like the lotion bottle, and your family impoverished. The plot twist more often than we process. The fruit seedless and the food processed when he prepared feast. Talking about the devil. Give grace before you eat. I pray for peace. Um, and basically, what I'm saying right there is, you know, like when you scatter people around and they don't know their real languages and they don't know their cousins over there, mm -hmm. and you know, like they don't know that they original and all of these things. When you don't know where you really come from and people strip your cut co your uh, culture from you. Mm -hmm. It's hard, and then they make you impoverished on top of it. It's a complex plot. Whoever created that, the people that created that plot, fucking brilliant. Even though it's ill, it's evil. evil. It's fucking. It's not. It's evil because the reason why it's evil is because it's enough resources for everyone to have. It is. You see what I'm saying? So for it, for people to be struggling like that, it's fucking evil. But but they plot. Is not wrong though. They they family good. Right. They just cut though. You see what I'm saying? You just cut those so you cut everybody out else off so that your so you so that all y'all families could be at the head of everything, controlling everything. That's not a wrong idea, but the world don't operate like that. You see what I'm saying? If you plant a seed into the earth, then something's going to grow from that. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So you don't need to withhold that. You can mm -hmm. help everyone. And with that seed, you reap what you sow as well. Exactly. And that's why they ass be trying to steal hearts and steal blood and organs from motherfuckers <laughs> because they organs fucked up. Let's not get into that. Yeah, I just, like, just want to be real. Ooh. You feel me? I just got to be real right quick. Stealing our melanin and stuff. You feel me? Like, right, yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Like, being black anywhere is just... I wouldn't rather be no other way, though. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. I definitely don't want to be nothing else. But just living and just, like, it's just crazy. I feel like I want to ask you a question. So, go ahead. So, so, because I thought about this the other day and I actually heard Elon Musk say something like, We actually living in the most interesting times that ever happened. 
with all of the technology, all of the things that we got going on, all of the, the like black people, all, all, everything that we got going on is the most interesting shit ever. Hey. Would you would you have rather would you have rather lived in a different time period? At I all? feel like the time right now that we live in is one of the best because we got the knowledge hmm. to know we have like literally the answers to everything in our hands. There's really besides the way that we think or everything, you know, distracting us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that we can't do. Is nobody that we can't be like. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like I feel like I was actually having a conversation with one of my friends about this, and they was talking about uh, another to get on the gay subject. I love gay people, y'all, but I'm just saying, just to get on the gay subject. They was talking about how this you this generation is so gay and woo 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 everybody gay and this and that and me personally I feel like everybody been gay it's just now everything is more broadcasted like people didn't see what we exposed to every day on social media mm -hmm. like we didn't see how people was actually in concentration camps mm -hmm. we didn't see how you know That's we didn't fact. get to see this stuff so now that we getting exposed to it and we learning the truth about stuff you know, it's a lot, and you know, but you can change it. Knowledge, right? exactly. When you, when you got, got knowledge for something, I mean, when you got knowledge about something, then you can change it. Like people in that was far away from the countries that them can't trans concentration camps mm -hmm. was in, they didn't know all about that shit like that. We know about we know about we know it. about Congo. We know about Palestine. We know about these things because we have these devices. So it's exactly. something that we can do about it. It's, exactly. It ain't like we totally in our own world. So but, yeah, I. But that's a bad thing too. Sometimes it is. You feel me? Because just like how you said, like, like, you know, like the LGBTQ and stuff like that is more broadcasted. Everything is more broadcasted. Everything. Like, like even with relationships, like people been. On some fuck shit, people been cheating. Like yeah. humans are humans. So it's just you like now saying? you see everybody. You all, see even um, people you don't know, people you never met in your life. You see their whole relationship unfold in front of your eyes. You see their relationship. You see women that you never seen before. You see men that you never seen before. Fat ass booties, like everything you know what I'm that like, you all type you exposed like. to so much, and it's like a part of it could be positive and negative because I this like. We was actually talking about this on the other podcast, well, the other episode, and it's just like, you know, you have to be really secure in this world, like, not, not want to say in the world, well, yeah, in the world, mm -hmm. you got to be very secure, especially in this generation, because you're going to be exposed to things that you don't have, and mm -hmm. things that you probably will never have, mm -hmm. and you have to be secure, and, you know, just... You are. Seeing the things that you see, uh -huh. you know, and this and, and be secure with yourself. Like, okay, well, I'm confident. With this who I am. I ain't gotta have the money. I ain't gotta have the cars. I ain't gotta have the big booty and the BBL titties. You know what I said, BBL titties, uh -huh. but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, you know, you gotta be real secure with yourself. So it's just like, but it's a, it's a teeter tottering thing. Like, it's a thin line between uh, being comfortable with yourself and being content where you are right you see what i'm saying so sometimes sometimes being comfortable can turn into contentment like we still got to push for our best self exactly. it's, it's, it's about it's about who you who you see yourself being visually in your head when you close your eyes right if you can see that person that mean that person exists right you feel me so if i see a person that's don't have a high school. I got still got my high school body. You see what I'm saying? I'm right. still I'm still looking like I'm in high school, except for my beard. You see what I'm saying? And right. I don't like that. Right. But if I see a person in my brain that look exactly like me, got the same name, do the same shit that I'm doing, and he about he about 20 pounds stronger, then I could go achieve that if I do do things. That's true. You see what I'm saying? But it's also gonna be things, you know, just going off of that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also gonna be things that you see that that's not like you that you can't achieve. That's true. So it's just you know when I was speaking on you know I don't know I, but I don't be knowing though because I, I I think I'm maybe I'm delusional but I think I could achieve anything. Okay, well I'm gonna just say as a, I'm gonna say as a woman then mm -hmm. I'm gonna just say as a female. Mm -hmm. Um, I never in my life would be able to achieve a G size breast. 
unless I go and get surgery. It's not possible. You know, I could go work out at the gym and, you know, get my mm-hmm. body together yeah. and all that, but I will never have that. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, it's not, yeah. you know, something that I want, but some women feel like they need it. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's just like That's a that's a character flaw in my opinion. Hmm. Like once you once you think that you need something that you don't have, like that's a character flaw. Like you need to like that's when you should be comfortable with yourself. Right. That's the thing about needing and wanting something. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people see these things and these images on social media and they feel like they need it because everybody getting it. Right. You see what I'm saying? But if you That's know who- You gotta be secure and just, and not maybe secure isn't the right word that yes. I'm using, but you just got, especially with everything being so exposed, mm-hmm. you just gotta be secure with who you are regardless of whatever you mm-hmm. see. It's always best to improve yourself over time, but just for, you know, just be comfortable with who you are, because mm-hmm. you are who you are. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, I feel like, I feel like definitely be comfortable with who you are, but I do but a lot also, of visualization because I know who I could be. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So it's good when you do visualization and you don't have unreal, and you, and you don't have unrealistic expectations yeah, of yourself. Right. You 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 see a person that literally could if I if I work my hardest today or if I work my hardest for every day for five years at doing this or doing that or doing all of these things then who would I become and that's who I view in my head and then I go do it you see what I'm saying so I feel like I feel like along with being comfortable with yourself you also got to you know put that pressure on yourself like I I know I could do this I know my, I could my do higher it. Who is my higher self? Right. You see what I'm saying? Who is that person? How do that person look? How do that person talk? What do that person eat? Right. What's in that person's bank account? These are the things that I visualize every day. What, like, how many people are in the fans, I mean, in the stands while I'm performing? Like, you know, that's what these are the things that I visualize and they become real to me and then I just work every day like I am that person. And I think that's what living is. I was gonna ask you earlier, it slipped my mind. I was gonna say, do you feel like you living or existing? I feel like I'm doing both. I feel like I'm doing both because some some days, some days I do get caught up. I mean, it's so easy to get caught up in you know everything that's going on around you. So some days I do just get in hustle mode, and it's just like I gotta do this right quick because I need to make sure that I'm able to usually it's my child that that's the driving factor like if I was to lose my car or something like that I wouldn't be able to go get my child you see what I'm saying so that'll make me get into an existing state so that I can just do what's need to be done so that I could you know live right. you see what I'm saying so yeah I think I do both but I want to I want to get to a point where I'm living and living looks like to me like how I said us, you know, everybody being able to offer each other something, one of their services, one of their resources, you feel me, uh, on a family compound. Um, living looks like to me, me learning new skills every day because skills is what really pay your bills. You see what I'm saying? Like when you say, for instance, you at retail, I work retail so many times in my life. You feel me? I work factory so many times in my life. They pay you for that skill. Right. They pay you for the skill of being able to stand up for 10 hours or 8 hours or walk around or bend or crouch or lift heavy objects or uh, put go backs back. You know, that's the skill that you're getting paid for. But the only reason why it's a small um, payout for that skill is because anybody could do it. Mm-hmm. But I focus on the skills most times that I feel like only I could do. do. You feel me? So, and I feel like the greatest people have done that all forever, no matter who you look at. Like, if you look at, you know, people in a political or or, or high level, you know, black person standpoint, like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X, they, they had eloquence, eloquence, eloquence. You know, they was able to speak very well in front of people and lead people and make people feel things. So that's the reason why they pay out what they pay out. You see what I'm saying? Uh, for instance, Kanye West, he able to make great beats. You feel me? He able to evoke emotion through music. Mm-hmm. 
That's why his payout is his payout. He able to evoke emotion through fashion and how he looks. You see what I'm saying? Or how or dictating what the trend gonna be and things of that nature. So yeah, I feel like uh, working on skills would be my lip, my my uh, my form of living. Like if I could play guitar or if I could learn a new language all day or if I could learn how to trade so I could get more money. Mm-hmm. Like these, like learning skills is always my go-to with everything. Like I feel my highest when I'm learning something new. Right. You feel me? So that's living for me. And that's what I want to be able to do. I want to be able to provide that for my children as well. Like making sure that they, okay, daddy, I want to do this. If that don't work out, you can do something you else. Do something you can else. do something exactly. else. Exactly. Because they know telling how many times I thought I was going to do something and end up doing something else. Mm-hmm. But, but having that leeway is the key, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, especially even in black communities, we, we shun people for par- people, parents. You know, letting them, you know, be on that type of time. Like, oh, you going, you know, you, your mama paying for this. Your mama paying oh, for that. Oh, man, we could, we know? could definitely talk about that because, like, um, hmm, like, a lot of people, I feel like most people, you know, I, I generation or I, uh, people is the only people that trip about that because, like, in white communities they and stuff like that. that. What? And I'm just saying, like, you know, people stand with that. Of course, you want to have your own shit. Of course. Like, that's just, you want to have your own shit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for the most part, most some of us get pushed out so fast that we never have the time to even learn about certain things. Or exactly. we pushed out and we have to learn things on our own. And, like, for example, taxes and, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So now we out here, we trying to figure out what the fuck going on. And we don't know nothing. Motherfuckers out here credit bogus you trying to get an mm-hmm. apartment don't know nothing about credit don't know yeah. this don't, don't got no money saved up none of that, and you that know. that's a part of the big the big plot though because half of you know the parents don't even know nothing about that like they couldn't that's even true. teach i'm sure if they was able you know, to be teaching that type of shit they would have did like but they it's purposely not taught in school like parents and shit they teach you they tell you to go to college they tell you to go to the you know to these uh, institutions and things of that nature get good grades, but that's only based upon European, right? Like standard. a European standard, a European criteria, um, and that's why I'm kind of against school. Um, I will homeschool my kids. I will too. I feel like um, a lot of stuff that I learned about, you know, every, everything that I know pretty much now is things that I learned outside of school. Me too. Don't get me wrong, math and all yeah. that, but it's like. Even the best version of math I learned outside of school. Mm-hmm. Some YouTube stuff that I was learning how Chinese people do math uh-huh. with adding numbers with their fingers. And mm-hmm. like, we didn't learn that. Mm-hmm. They doing math, 100 math problems in 30 seconds. Like, just by mm-hmm. <laughs> twiddling their fingers. And you know, we ain't learn stuff like that. So, no taxes, shit that could put you in jail, you know, put you away. All these things um, that they keep away from us. It's for a reason. It's not. Don't. Act, well, let's not even think like it's not for a reason. It's for Man, a reason. It's for, for sure. a reason. Because if you, if you, because like even with me, um, in twenty twenty one, I began like trading and like forex and stock market and shit like that, and I was making some pretty decent money. But it was just that you got to put money in. So you can get money out. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A lot of my people like, man, I ain't learning that shit, boy. I cash, you like, you know, like. But if you really open your mind up that's to something, exactly. But that's the thing. Like we already behind a little bit because white people teaching their kids this at five, right? Seven, eight. You see what I'm saying? So we got a lot of ground to cover. But I feel like through an open mind, we definitely could do it, though. Yeah. Definitely so. Um, you spoke about eloquence and things like that and, um, earlier. And I wanted to brush off the topic. Like, I find it funny how, you know, like when I was, when I was coming up and I'm gonna just use music mm-hmm. artists, for example, how they had to get put through certain training and, you know, learn how to speak in public platforms and things like that. You know, pretty much artist development. And now the artists that they got, they just pushing them out there on the mainstream, just like, they don't know how to conversate with people, Mm -hmm. don't know how to, 
just a hot hot mess. Why you why you feel like it's like that now? Like why you feel like it changed so much? Why do you feel, I feel like, like I feel like because first of all, and I heard uh, this guy called named Free So. He he went, he make music. He raw as hell. He made like positive uh, conscious music. But he basically said hip hop is the only profession or music or rap or whatever. Well, I would say rap. It's the only profession that you don't need any prerequisite before you join. Hmm. So, like, even for a doctor, you have to go to school for eight years before right. you become a doctor. For a psychiatrist, you got to, it's a minimum of four years. Yeah. Like, somebody can make a song on their phone right now and then. And blow up. And blow up. And become a millionaire. Tomorrow. And not, not know how to talk. You see, that's the reason why it is how it is because it's. Um, and that's the reason why I make what I make. But it's always been like that, Drive. What? Like, you could all, well, not necessarily, it's not as easy as, you know, it, it is now, but those people didn't have the training to, you know, go out either. I feel like now they just really don't care about the artists no more. Like, it's just, they just, it's, it's like, it always been a man eat, you know. Or, yeah. You know, it always been messed up, but. I feel like now they just really don't care about nothing. Like the image, the trajectory they pushing now, is just like. I think I think because you, you gotta, you said a key word pushing. You gotta think about who's pushing these artists. Period. Right. You see what I'm saying? People who don't have our um, best interests at heart exactly. are pushing these artists. Exactly. So it's it's cool to be. Not eloquent, eloquent. You feel what I'm saying? It's cool to not know how to talk. It's cool to be dumb. It's cool to not know how to read. It's cool to, you know, be illiterate. It's cool, to, you know, like it's cool because these people who got these Rolex watches on and these long, big chains and things of that nature, they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to. It's some that do. And that's them the people who they want you looking up to. Exactly, because then you'll become like them insane the, the, the way like mm. everything is set up that's why I that's why and that's why I was talking about you talking to you about obligation earlier mm-hmm. I know that the lane why I open for a person like me you see what I'm saying even though everything is being pushed towards this people it's just like McDonald's don't nobody like McDonald's you be, you eat McDonald's when you oh, don't have shit else to eat. Oh, but they still getting billions of dollars, though. You not, exactly, but you eat McDonald's when you don't got nothing to eat. And some people just rule out McDonald's, period, because it's like, okay, McDonald's was fat when I was a kid. I used to get three McChickens with cheese and buffalo sauce. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and a fry, my nigga, and a and a and, and, and a high C, a orange high C. You see what I'm saying? But nowadays, it's like. You just kind of got to grow out of these things. You feel me? Like right. Some people don't, you know, like, uh, some people going to grow. I think that's why it's a lane for people like me, because people going to grow out of McDonald's meals. Exactly. People going to want them a home cook, you know, mm-hmm. home cook meal. If you if you sit McDonald's and then home cook meals next to people, you, what you think they're going to choose? A lot of people not going to choose McDonald's. Maybe a child will choose McDonald's, but. Every a lot of people going, ooh, let me get them sweet potatoes, that mac and cheese. You wanna know what's crazy though? I don't agree. You you think a lot of people going to... I feel like a lot of people will have a home cooked meal with steak and rice and whatever whatever. They favorite meal and they will still pick McDonald's. Oh I, I don't know. We gotta agree to disagree on that one. I feel like they will still pick McDonald's and it ain't even just about that. I feel like it's just choices overall, just People, we know what what's best for us, mm-hmm. but we just don't do those things, and that's just it's just as simple as that. Just yeah, we we know we need to eat healthy, but motherfuckers are still eating chicken dinners. We we know we need to but get I, up. I and, think I think that come from survival mode as well. Though. You mm-hmm. feel me? Like sometimes, especially like man, it's it's a lot of things that could be attributed to survival mode, gang. Like. You don't got no money to go grocery shopping or nobody ever taught you how to cook because your mama didn't know how to cook. Or, you know, these things are survival mode things. If you was a chicken dinner kid, you feel me? You was cool. You was eat, cool eating banquets every night or eating noodles. I see it all the time. 
You feel me? If you was cool eating these things every night and you a person that's just in your ways, you're not going to try to that change that no, shit right. up. That ain't nothing to you, okay? So we're not thinking about them people that's closed mad and we already said that. You right. feel me? The people that's open-minded, they're not going to choose no McDonald's at all. The people that's closed minded and been eating McDonald's for forever, hell yeah, bring me that McDonald's. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I ain't saying that people who eat McDonald's is like, you know, I'm not saying Any that. Type of way. I'm just, just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying McDonald's and a home cooked meal, anybody will choose. Like, a lot of people, who, if you got some sense, you're gonna choose the fucking home cooked meal. Period. You know who cooked it, Auntie cooked it, you see what I'm saying? Like, you, you trust it. You like that. It should, it should be like that, but like, it's, I don't know, in this world, I just feel like it's not. It's I feel like it is, but I feel like only the closed mind the individual is going to eat the McDonald's. Like, because when you said Over that, the- I didn't even think about McDonald's, what jumped to my mind naturally, I'm going to just say, okay, like, I'm going to just use a female, for example, mm-hmm. right? And... Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm better than nobody or none of them. Never, you know what I'm saying? I'm, That's unique. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I'm going to just use a female, for example, and I'm going to just say, um, uh, I'm not going to say a, ba- a, a, a bad quality. I'm going to just mm-hmm. say a female that still got a lot of things to learn mm-hmm. sure. and uh, uh, someone who is of higher standards. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a person would know that who the person with higher standards is, this is example, and will still just just go do whatever the fuck they want to do anyway. And they know, they know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Personally, like, yeah, you know, but they still go do what the fuck they want to do. And that's just an example. I know? feel like, I feel like a lot be attributed to our traumas too, like, like, cause what you saying that I am thinking me as a man, and me having this toxic woman over here who drink all the time and smoke all the time and, you know, do drugs all the time and be outside all the time and probably would cheat on me. And then I got this good girl over here. You see what I'm saying? I will cook me a, a meal or buy me a meal or get my hair cut or something like that. Sometimes if I'm living in... Uh, level of trauma if i'm not trying to do no better for myself right now and i'm drinking every day and i'm in depressed and in, that life. I'm do- in that life i'm going to pick what res- we always go towards our frequency right so i'm going to pick the I shit like how you, that, you know I, I, we always go towards our frequency so i'm going to pick the toxic one right i might pick both because right. i know you good for me and i know that she's not but I, I need both of them energies in my life right now because I'm trying to get up there. Ah, I need to get up there. But I'm still but here. But I'm ah, right here right now. It's, hmm. it's really about choices. And that's why I said about the McDonald's thing is because it's like when people in that, you see what I'm saying? They is going to pick the McDonald's over the... Over the when um, they in that. Yeah, when they in that. You feel me? But a lot of people don't want to be in what they in. You see what I'm saying? True. So as soon as they see that, some people just need a... Uh, a getaway a push a like push. man like like man oh damn that's a that's a home cooked meal over there it's mcdonald's over there i've been eating this all the time i want that i want that you know I ain't gonna lie. Uh-huh. yeah you know right. so some people want to make a change like I, that's the thing about the world too i think a lot of people want to make changes they just need that like, and then yeah they need that push and then man Survival mode is crazy. Is. Traumas are crazy. Living in a, in a constant state of anxiety or fear or drama is crazy. So of course somebody gonna do like you gotta expect that out of somebody, you know. Right. Until they see, you know, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Like until they see what's over here and understand what this vibe like, you know. Cause like going to a concert where where people and I'm not even gonna say like you know. Whatever people, whatever music people want to make is what on them. You see what I'm saying? But going to a concert, personally, um, with an artist that I always talk about killing and drug dealing and popping pills. Not saying that I haven't talked about those things before. Um, it's not where I'm at. Yeah, it's not where I'm at. 
and the vibes that don't talk about that are always better than the ones that do. I feel the same way. Like in depression and shit like that. Like like all the sad vibes. Like if I go to an Erica Badu concert, it's gonna kill everybody concert for real because she's spreading a different type of energy. energy. You see what I'm saying? She's not. Because when you making music or if you putting anything into the earth, I usually try to project what I want to happen. I don't really think about reality or reality because what is reality? You see what I'm saying? The only thing we can really say reality is is if something like, like, a, like I don't know, like, you know, like something tragic happened and it really happened. Like, right. you see what I'm saying? Like a bus crash into a pole or something like that. That's real reality. Right. You see what I'm saying? But, but... Reality is what you make it. It's your pers perspective of things. So I try to put out what I want to see before I take anything in. You see what I'm saying? I try to put out what I want to see every single time. You feel me? That's why I would give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, they eat a they eat a home cooked meal, gang. Cause I want you, I want you to eat that shit. Like, I don't right. want you to be eating that shit, gang. I, don't, I believe that you don't want that shit. Right. I believe that you know that that shit not no good for you. Right. Especially in comparison to this shit over here. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think people be knowing what's good for them, but they just, sometimes, some people too stuck in their ways. For sure. You feel what I'm saying? Because I've definitely been that person Me stuck too. in my ways. Me too. But I always could, I always realized I was stuck in my ways and just needed a way to get out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the first thing. I feel like and that's what puts you ahead or um, you know, put you ahead is because you can identify that and then when something, you know, when something that's good for you come around you, you, you know. You will take the opportunity to have it as opposed to, hell no, this is what I've been doing. Like, nah. No. That's not how life goes. That's not how growth is. Yeah. What's something that um you always wanted to get asked that you never got asked? Hmm. I used like, yeah, I think I hope she asks me this. I don't know. How many kids I want? <laughs> How many kids you want? As many as God gave me every minute. I want four. I want like infinity. I want two boys and two girls, and I want my two boys to be older than the girls. I want, like two, I want like infinity. I ain't gonna lie. Like, that's a lot of kids. See, you ain't gotta push them out. So you yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right, but you feel me? It's like Different you gotta people. provide for them forever. You gotta be, you gotta be, you know, you gotta be a real father. That's all. Yeah. Like, that's a hard thing. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's something that you know you gotta be able to get over. Like, that's a hard thing. Like, you gotta be able to get over that. Maybe not the same person that I that I have one by because that's like my that's really like one of my great friends. Right. I ain't gonna lie, like we we I ain't gonna say too much, but that's one of my great friends. So we ain't even on that type of time for real. Um, what makes your soul smile? Your soul smile. My soul smile. My soul smile. My soul smile. Alright. Um, one thing would be my child looking up at me just even if she got an attitude or whatever. It don't even matter when she just look up, like, you know, and then it's like a little me right there. I can tell they made your soul smile. Your whole body language like, just changed. Damn, it's like a little me gang, like it's like a miniature me, like all the characteristics of myself she don't even talk like that but she got every characteristic I have and I just can't even get so mad at her I just be like whatever man. Like, that's what you want to do right now <laughs> <laughs> do your shit and then the other thing would be uh, when, I, when I'm able to lift the weight off my family back like if I'm able to help my mama in any kind of way or help you know like provide you know an act of service for anybody that I love Mm -hmm. Like these, like just giving, for real. I would say giving to anybody, for real. I'm more of a giver than a receiver. That's dope, man. If I can help, I'm going to help. See what I'm saying? That's just what type of person I am. I don't give no fuck. Period. Because
because who knows how long you're going to be in this bitch. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, people always be like, I have to tell my clients this yesterday. She was like, we got so much time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I was like, we don't. Like, you got to think about it. Like, we don't know how much time we have. So, actually, you need to say, we don't got enough time. We need to get this done because... Mm-hmm. You say, oh, we got time, we got time, we got time. You don't know how much time you got. Exactly. That ain't no game. So, with that being said, if the whole world was watching this video right now, what is something that you want them to hear? The whole world. If you could make a change in the world because everybody's listening, Mm -hmm. what would you say to them? I would say, be your best to be authentically who you are. Do your best to find who you are. And that could be so many different things. You could be a painter, a writer, uh, an engineer, uh, a chef. You could be a, a, a speaker, a philosopher. You could be anything. You could be a father. You could be a son. You could be a mother, a wife, whatever you are don't allow anyone to box you in just be authentically you and whatever your intuition tells you to do as long as it's morally right do that shit and be yourself and be unapologetic about it and whoever don't like you is not part of your tribe or whoever don't like what you got going on ain't part of your tribe and you shouldn't want them to be a part of your tribe your vibe is your tribe. So be you. Every day, all day. Period. And that's that. You know what? I got another question. What's something you always wanted to say to me? Or give me some advice before we go. All right, bet. I want to tell you. Amethyst. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, I want to tell you that you are a dope genuine individual and you are full of love and I want you to allow yourself to don't shorten yourself or put yourself in a box for you either you see what I'm saying you a Virgo I know how Virgos are because the mother of my child is a Virgo and y'all perfectionists you feel me even to y'all self and sometimes being a perfectionist can be hard and it could be um, it could stunt your growth so sometimes you just gotta go after it and be confident while you do it. No matter what you, you know, no matter what everything else is looking like, you're you for a reason. You're here for a reason. You had people who perished, who passed away, who all of these things, but you still here. So every day that you go outside, you know, be here. Take up space. Don't be scared to take up space. Don't be scared to. You feel me? Stand on business. Don't be don't be be confident. Cause I'm standing on business. <laughs> be confident because like you know like you would hate to for anything to ever happen to you and be like damn I could have or I should have or I or this is you know like you knew you had these skills or you knew you had a set of skills that nobody else has and you never used them because of what everyone else would say. Or, you know, the fear of you taking up too much space or ruffling feathers. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes, I'm just, I, 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 I just came up with the fact that I'm gonna be the villain in somebody's story. And it may not even be because I did something wrong to them. It may be because I exude confidence. I exude who I truly am. And that I exude, might bother them so bad. Yeah. Because they don't know who they truly is. But that's cool. That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're not here to please anyone. We're here to live, not exist. Period. Go. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Go. Oh, and that's that. <laughs> Indeed.